Like there was even a time where he threatened me with a gun, like because I wanted to leave him alone. Like I got to an age, I was around 15, maybe going on 16. And I'm like, no, like this is just not right. And I got the courage and I'm like, no, like I don't want to do this anymore. And he literally put a gun to my head and told me that I could not leave him. And when I got the phone call that he was sentenced and he was going to prison, oh my gosh, when I tell you I just felt free, I literally felt free. It was just like a whole bunch was lifted off of me. It was like a burden was lifted off of me. And it was like, I can go forth in life now. You know, like I can go forth and say that I feel like honestly that I'm healed. Like I'm literally set free. I feel like that was the best feeling anybody could have. Dion Ray Rivers, age 57 of San Bernardino, was charged for multiple sex crimes involving a minor. Rivers, a pedophile and sexual predator, was sentenced on February 2, 2021, to 15 years in state prison for these crimes. Um, the first time I met him, I was 13 years old. Um, I met Dion at church. Um, he was a guest pastor for my grandmother's church. And I go to the home and they're showing me around. The wife goes upstairs because she takes a shower and gets ready for work. And um, he's showing me around the house, showing me like where my room would be, where I'm sleeping and all that. And then from there, we're watching a movie. And then after the movie, he's like, come here. Like He basically tells me that I'm going to perform oral sex on him. And then after that, I end up going upstairs and I'm just crying my eyes out. Like soon after, I'm just crying my eyes out in the room. Like that whole night, I did not sleep that whole night. I was just up like, what the heck? Like what happened to me? And then eventually I really did think it was my fault too. I'm like, maybe if I wouldn't have, you know, came over. Maybe if I wouldn't have talked to him on the phone. Maybe if I wouldn't have, you know, let him be my godfather. Um, but shortly after, that went on for three years. Three years, I was being sexually abused um, by a pastor. But I honestly, like with my experience, like when I went to the police station and I went to people that were permanently with me, it was the greatest experience ever. At first, I was so scared to tell them. And they were like, no, like you can tell us, like we believe you. I didn't even tell them what happened to me yet. They're like, we believe you. Like you just have to talk to us and we will do everything we can to get this man. It actually helped a lot of people with me coming forward. It was a lot of people that I never talked to. And just by seeing a post or seeing different stuff that happened and just telling them what they could make it, they did me like, wow, like I was molested by my boyfriend and people didn't believe me because that was my boyfriend. And then the girl told me that she was molested by her grandfather and they didn't believe her because that's her grandfather and how could he do something like that? And she even had a miscarriage by him and it's like, it takes a lot of guts and a lot of strength to really come out and help somebody and tell someone what you've been through because a lot of people will not believe you. And it's like probably a lot of girls and stuff that go through that or went through that being threatened or I'm going to do this to your family or I'm going to do this to your home. But I promise you, if you step out on that faith that you have, and if you step out and do what you need to do and get your word across and tell somebody that you know that will protect you, especially the police, um, if you really reach out and you talk to them and tell them, you will be okay. Like, you will be fine and you will get what you need. You will get the help that you need. Like, even me, like, they were like, we can put you in counseling groups. We can do this. We can do that. I'm like, this was enough for me. <laughs> you just getting him. You just being by my side. You showing me that I wasn't allowed because he even told me like, no one's going to believe you. No one's going to think that I will do something like that. No one's like, you know, planted different seeds of doubt. Like you will get planted seeds of doubt. You will be confused. You will be all types of stuff. But if you literally step out, you will be okay you're no longer in that place anymore. You have to let go. And that's what I learned. When you, when I spoke my truth and when I came forward, I had to let it go. Because if I didn't let it go, it would have still been tearing me up. It would have brought me down. It would have broken me. I probably would have been in a dark place doing drugs, drinking, all types of stuff. But when I let it go, when I got out of that situation, it brought out a happier me, a greater me. I feel like 
I'm more happier than I've ever been, like my whole entire life. I feel like I've overcome something that a lot of people feel like they can't overcome or they have to stay in that place, but they don't have to. I love my victim advocate. Ryan was absolutely the best. <laughs> she, um, honestly, she encouraged me. She made sure that I was comfortable. She made sure that I wasn't doing something that would make me feel out of place or make me feel like, uh, or cringe or something. She made sure that I was with the place where I wanted to be. She made sure I was okay. She made sure everything was going okay. Okay, like, you know, she didn't make sure just with this situation, she made sure everything like, you okay with your family? Like, you okay? How's everything going? She called, checked up on me random times, not even just to talk about that, just random times. Like, how are you doing? How have you been? Because that's what I really needed. Like, we may feel like, we could do I can do it by myself. I'll deal with my thoughts. But it, honestly, when you have somebody else and you have somebody pushing you, because there's going to be days where you feel like you can't make it, where you feel like, oh, I'm tired of this. I just want to give up. Because when I was going through it, there were a lot of times where I tried to commit suicide. There were a lot of times where I felt like I'm just giving up. Like, I don't have no one that loves me. Because that's how your mindset is in that. It's like, no one loves me. No one cares. But to have people that reached out, have people that loved you, have people that were pushing you, it's the best feeling ever. If you ever find yourself in a situation related to mine, similar, or something that's not similar to mine, and it's different, know that you have people that really do care. Know that you have people that will, are willing to be in your corner, are willing to root for you. You may not have a mom, or a sibling, or a father figure, or somebody there that helps you or you know believes you but you do have other people that do like even all the police officers all the advocates that i've talked to all the lawyers that i've talked to they believe me and all you have to do is step up and say something because there is someone that will my name is destiny mac and i am a survivor